Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. This is the seventh episode of the story, where we see the history of Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto develop in the shinobi world. He will develop a new dojutsu, the most powerful one, with the help of a demon fox sealed inside it, and he will gather powerful ninja in Leaf Village for his plans. Create a new village. To show your support, like and subscribe. Let's get this show going. There was a crystal shape deep in the forest near the lake and in it you could see a sleep beauty. Gurin was deep in meditation, thinking about her fight with the clay bastard. Thanks Kami, if I didn't manage to use the jutsu in time it could cost my life. Who would think that the freak will have another mouth in his chest? Well, at least I have a new winning in my resume and come to think of it, I killed one of those bastards from Orochimaru's previous group. Okay, what now? I can release the jutsu then? Where should I go? Thinking about going step by step, she released the jutsu and the crystal shattered and she stood up. Now what? Where should I go? Hmm. Let's see, there should be a town not too far. Ken couldn't believe her eyes. There was lots of them. Too many shinobi to hide in such a small cave. What could she do? As her orders she should wait for Anko and her company to move for next section of plan but, why did she separate from others? Excuse me, can you help me? Ken asked one of the adults that was less creepy than the others. Hello young princess, I'm Yamanaka and head of Yamanaka clan. How can I help you? Oh then you are Eno's father. Indeed. Where is she? I should speak with her, hmm, she was around. Last time I saw her speaking with Shikamaru you know him? Yup. Thanks, with that she left the group searching for her superior in order. Soon she found her sitting near a tree speaking to someone about Naruto. Yo. Oh Kin. How are you? Is everything okay? Hello. Came a new lazy voice, um, Ino-chan can I speak with you in private? You can speak in front of Shika. He is a close friend to Naruto. I see. Well. Shouldn't Anko be here by now? She will be here soon why? You see, there are lots of people here and if we want to move in secret it'll be hard by this number, Mendux, hey, I was speaking about the problem with Shika before you come. Don't worry, Anko will be here soon and I think she can find a solution for this problem. It was around sunset when Anko and her company entered the camp area. They were tired but the main problem was Hayate's condition. He was tired and suffering from chakra exhaustion. He used most of his chakra to keep himself in tow and now he could not stand at all. Enko sensei I'm glad you are here. Hello Eno. How is it going? No big problem, but I have a question. How should we continue the trip if we want to hide our track? Hmm, <clears throat> I don't have idea, but we can find a way with each other how is everyone? Good and in shape, Karen was tired. She was walking all day long listening to foolish mumblings of her companion. It seemed that the bastard didn't know how to keep his mouth shut. They were walking in a town looking for a place to sleep. Suddenly something cut her vision. She knew this woman. She had seen her in one of Orochimaru's hideouts. Actually for some time they became good friends. Grabbing the boy's hand, she dragged him toward the place she saw the other woman. Oh Kami. Why did you create these troublesome women? Shut up. Hey Gurin. The called woman turned around looking for the person who called her by name. Looking directly to Karen. She was deep in thought for a moment to remember the other one. Suddenly she jumped away and grabbed a kanai. What do you want? Gurin. It's me Karen. Yeah I know you. What do you want? If you are trying to capture me and grab me to one of those creepy hideouts, I prefer to die. Come down, we are like yourself, and no one wants to go back. I just hope to sit and speak with an old friend. Hey funny, forget about it. And with that Gurin jumped away leaving a stunning girl and smirking man behind. Naruto was deep in thought. He could not believe that he left two of his important people behind in Konoha. His meeting with Ayame was something that he never would forget for all of his life flashback no jutsu he was standing in front of the door looking to the woman in frame. He could not believe his eyes. This was not the old happy and fresh Ayame he knew for all his life. The woman in door frame was depressed, 
empty of life, with baggy eyes and no hope for tomorrow. Ayame? Hi, can I help you? Well, you see, I have some news from one of your old friends but we need to talk in private. Do I know you? Yes and no. What does that mean? You see, as I said, I know one of your old friends, a blonde one with blue eyes, I heard so much about you so. Oh Kami, you know Naru. Lady, I'll appreciate if you let me come inside and speak in private, come in, later on that night Naruto told Ayame everything about his long trip, everything, even separation of Kayubi and his plans for future. Now you see, today I went to the ramen stand of your father, I was thinking of asking you to leave the village and come with me. What do you say? Oh Naruto, you can't guess how long each night I looked into sky and prayed for your well-being. But, you know, my father is old and he can't go on long trips, he is not that healthy man you knew. He is fragile and I can't leave him behind. I should stay here and watch after him. I see, but I can be something more than a distant friend if you want. What do you mean? You see, in past months our shop gained more attention than ever and our business is on top. Well, do you know the benefit? I can't see what you mean, oh come on, you were brilliant. Do you know what happens when people gossip? They tell more than they should, actually. And being the best gossip girl after Eno, well, I can gather more information than anyone you can imagine. Just send a summon each month and I'll send you all information I gathered about Konoha. This way you can have an eye on the village and its activities, oh Kami, you are evil, even more than Anko, said Naruto with a big grin on his face. You bet. Did I mention that I have some good friends in decoding department of Hokage's office? Kai, oi Naruto. What Kakashi sensei? First of all, stop calling me sensei. Next, what is your plan? Should we go to the hideout and move with the rest or should we go on separate way? Hmm, let's see. I think they have some problem with the number of people in the camp. They can't move like then with no trace. I think if we go on a separate way it can help cover them a little bit. Then what is our next destination Naruto-kun? Asked Kashina, you know. I think there is no need to walk all the way. And by saying that he summoned Gamabunta, oi Naruto. Long time no see. Did you summon me to drink? You owe it after all, not this time Bunta. You see, I need to go to demon country and I need to be there fast and with no trace. Hey young one I'm not a taxi. I know Bunta. Just this time okay? Then you owe me two boxes of sake, deal. And with that all of them jumped to his back and left the place with no more trace. Shein was sitting in the new cage building and was handling the jobs. Kayubi had arrived two days ago and informed her that the plan was success and everybody would soon be in village. Next day Jiraiya came and informed them that he would go to help people find the new village and left. Now in the office Kayubi was standing near the window and was looking to the new face carved in the mountain. We have lots of job to be done. We need to build a new shinobi academy and we need to do it fast. And we need to start negotiation with other villages. By the way did anyone inform the case cage and rakage about what happened? I think pervert had done it. What should we do when the other Jinchurikis come? Should we separate bijus like yourself? I'm sure that Naruto wants Nibi out of Yugito, but I don't know his plans for others. I think we should do the same for other ones too. Why? Well, you told me that Akatsuki is after the bijus and where will they look for them? They will think that they are contained in Jinchurikis and if by any chance they capture one of them and try to separate the biju what will they get? Biju chakra? But what will be the use of chakra without the spirit? And if they won't have spirit I can recapture the chakra no matter the distance, space and time. Hey, poor bastards. They will be tired after some time trying to separate biju and as soon as they finish the job they will see that the chakra will fly away to who knows where. But still the Jinchuriki will be dead, not exactly. What do you mean? Well, the process kills the person because they use wrong method for separating the spirit. I use the correct method. Honestly, did you ever think why you can think and speak separately? The reason is that you have all of your spirit. One tail of chakra? Yes. 
but you have all of your spirit and if they try to separate something from Naruto-sama it won't harm him at all. The only response Shien got was a slight chuckle and surprisingly a huge kiss. On her lips. Consider it as thank you. Sasuke was walking in the streets thinking about these past months. His encounter with Itachi was something that he never thought in his wildest dreams. After that his marriage with Tsunade and finally news of assassination of his target, Danzo, was something that should make him happy. But he was not ordinary human being. You see, a twisted mind that had concentrated on dark things from his very childhood. A brain that would think about revenge and killing his own brother every morning when he was eating breakfast. Well, you should not expect normal and logical thinking from him. After all, he was not happy. Why? Because he couldn't revenge his clan himself. He was weak and pathetic. But he has new objective in his twisted mind. To become powerful and gain Mangekyu by any means and become next Hokage. To rule this village and next the whole shinobi world. Let's see. The only way to gain Mangekyu is to kill your nearest friend or person. Hey, as always, I'm pathetic. I even have no one as a near friend. The only one I have in life is old woman as life and a banshee that thanks me every time I spank her fat and ugly ass. How should I gain power? My only chance was core seal and I ruined it foolishly. But no matter what, I'll find a way. Aruka was watching his student doing their homework. He could not help himself. After graduation of Naruto and his classmates no one made him happy. That class was his golden time in academy. Sighing deep. He went back to task in hand, teaching these brats about Konoha's mighty history. Eureka was at work, one of normal days for her as decoder department at Hokage's office. Suddenly a chunin ran to door and asked for a decoder. She motioned him to set and speak. You see, this message came minutes ago from Suna. It's encoded and we need decoding as fast as possible. Opening the message she started the job and after five minutes decoded the message. Reading the result she was surprised. We have problem. Case Cage is missing with his siblings and we can't track them. We need help. Naruto, Kakashi and Kashina were walking in streets of their new village. It seemed that most of villagers were aware of what was happening and were glad. They would send their greetings toward their new Onikage and would cheer him. Wow. I thought I would have problem dealing with civilian, hmm. They seemed to be happy about their new development. Kashina. Well, shinobi living in village means that the village will be safe from so many problems. Bandits, missing nins, gangsters, and neighbor countries. I think you are right. Wow look at the mountain. It's my face. He he, said Naruto scratching back of his head sheepishly and pointing to the mountain with other hand. Kawaii. Welcome to your home Onikage-sama. When I'll have my first D-rank mission sir said Kakashi jokingly making his company laugh Ino was checking her routine checkup on Hayate when they heard some footsteps. Looking to the direction they saw Anko and Yugo with several more friends coming to visit him. How is he Ino-chan? Asked Yugo with some fear hidden in her voice. Considering your speed and distance of travel, I should say that I'm surprised with his stamina. He will be fine after two more days. Of course as fine as his condition will let, said Eno mumbling the last part. Eno, we all know about his condition but we can't change that. We are grown up people and we all know what will happen and that we can't change it. But at least we can be around him and make his last days as much happier as we can. Replied Anko. Hey Anko did you found a way for travel in lightning with no track? Asked Hayate, no way. Even if we separate and use different paths, still we can't cover our tracks. There is a way, came the voice of a new person. Looking around they saw Jiraiya leaning to a tree with closed eyes. Care to explain? Asked Anko, one word Anko-chan, summons, wow, why didn't I think about it? I think Shika will kill himself after hearing the solution, said Ino jokingly. Still we have so many people to cover. Said Yugo, hmm, we can send them on daily base. Each group can contain different people from different clans. This way if something happened to summon and they needed to continue the way themselves they will be more prepared. Hayate, good plan. 
Now I have toads but. They are good for one try and using them multiple times is not wise. Eno I think that you have ravens correct? After seeing Eno nod. Well, they are the best situation. Jiraiya. With all respect Jiraiya Sama. Why we can't use toads more than once? You go. First of all, they don't like to move people other than their summoners. Second, they are big and they travel on land. So, if you use them once the chance of being tracked in near zero. After all do you know any tracker that can look around kilometers for the next scent of same toad? But when you use them more than once in situations like this, people may see them in their travel and the smell will be more track able. I see. But with my ravens. Well, they travel in sky. So there is no track able markers on land and no scent to follow. And if they fly high people will see them as some bigger birds flying in sky and won't understand what was the real one. By the way, they can travel as fast as toads. So, we'll start moving groups from tomorrow morning and it should be finished in about a month. And honestly I think no one will find this hideout in a month. Answer Jiraiya. How about Konoha trackers? Asked Yugo, as you know most of them were in Izuka and those that are not will follow us until the border and at worst, they will inform Rakage. But you should not be worried because Naruto has alliance with Rakage and I informed him about our actions and he promised me full coverage for around a month. Well, can I ask for a favor? I want to be in first group that will go tomorrow. Morning, said Kurenai entering the conversation for the first time. And why is that Kur Chan? Asked Anko with playful voice. Let's just say that I want to see my future fiancé and fast as I can. And who is that? Hmm, same one with yours I guess. Suddenly people heard a dump sound. Looking the direction they found Jiraiya with his head hit the ground and his legs in the air twisting and rivers of blood flowing from his nose. Tamari could not wait any longer. They were traveling for days and soon they would be in Demon Village as Gara called it. She was thinking about a blonde man who saved his brother from becoming devil. She knew that Gara was thinking about leaving the village and going after Orochimaru's track to find a way to remove the seal, and she was sure that if her brother left the village at that time she would never see him again. And then that white hair man with his student came and helped him. She didn't pay attention to them first but as days gone she thought about the boy more and more. She was not sure about what was going on in her mind. The only thing she had was her brother's teasing about her and the blonde man. She didn't believe them when then told her that she had fallen in love but now she was not certain anymore. Hmm. Gara, our little flower is daydreaming about her love again, is it so Tima? Baka he is not my boyfriend. Then you agree that you were thinking about him, said Kankoro with musical sound, ya yeah, ya, yeah, no way. Oh come on Tima. We all know that the blonde is your center of thinking these days. And we both know what's the meaning of such thing. Is that so Gara? I thought that you didn't have experience. Am I wrong then? Don't tell me that you had some secrets for yourself. Said Tamari hoping to change the subject. No. I don't have secrets but. It doesn't mean that I can't understand my sister. Yeah. You see. Even my inexpert bro knows that you love him. Jeez. Okay I agree. I was thinking about him, but not about things that you perverts have in mind. I was thinking about what will happen when we enter the new village. Will he be that much powerful to stand his own ground against other villages? Don't tell me that those five villages will sit and look, hmm. I don't think that they will be easy, but I think that he has power, said Kankoro thinking deep, well, come to think about it, he has me and Nibi at his side. This alone will be an army for itself. And there is also that pervert Sanin. Don't underestimate him. Did I mention that Eno Chan informed me about what happened in Konoha? Asked Tamari, remembering Eno's message, Nop. Said Gara, well, it seems that almost all of the Konoha's big clans leave the village to go to this new village. I don't know how, but it seems that the blonde managed to make alliance with Inazuka, Nara, Abarame, and most of elites of Konoha. Did they leave Konoha? Asked Kankoro surprised. Seems so, replied the blonde girl. Then Konoha is. The weakest in five nations now and they won't plan on any kind of attack soon and this new village will be as powerful as previous Konoha. 
means that it is the most powerful in current state. But a powerful village needs a powerful leader and this was what I was thinking about. Is he that much powerful? And I don't mean just physical. I mean political, who knows? There is just one way to know. Replied Gara ending the conversation and jumping farther speeding the travel Karanai was happy. She was the first one who entered the new home village and was hoping to see Foxy alone. She needed to speak with him alone about her feelings. She was confused and hoped that speaking with Naruto will help sorting her mind. Looking around she found the new mountain with Naruto's head on it and below that she could easily see the cage tower. It seemed that Hannah found the place at the same time. Much to her annoyance she came with her and now was walking beside Kuranai. Anyo. Do you think we can see him today? Asked Hannah. Why not? Well, this village is still in development state and there are lots of jobs to be done and I'm sure that there is so much paperwork. But this doesn't mean that he will not have time to see us. After all we can help him better than most of the people in village. Hope so. Minutes later they entered the cage tower and were greeted by no of other than Kashina. Wow look who is here, welcome. Hello Kashina-sama. Oh come on don't call me like that it sounds like I'm an old hag. Just call me Kashina. How are you Kashina-chan? Where is Naruto? Can we see him today? Hmm, he is in his office. You should find it easily. After all we designed the tower after Konoha and I must say that he was more than happy when he saw it. Come on let's go. And by that they start walking until they reached a door that was guarded by no other one than Kayubi. Hello. Welcome Tenshi-chan. I assume you are here to see Onikage-sama? Well, none of you need permission just enter the mission room and knock the office door. And by that Kuranai and Hana entered the room and went straight on and knocked the door to office. Soon they heard Naruto's voice giving them permission to enter. Entering the office they looked around and was shocked seeing multiple cage bunchen doing the paperwork and one Naruto sitting behind a table looking to some papers. The one behind the table looked up and soon had a wide grin on his face. Welcome Tenshi-chan, Hana-chan. When did you enter the village? Hello Onikage-sama. Well, we entered minutes ago. How are you Onikage-sama? Crap. Will you two stop calling me like that? Please? Just Naruto as always ha? Huh? At least when there is no other one here. Hmm. Acceptable said Kuranai with fake thinking pose and Hannah nodding sheepishly with grin on her face, good. Now sit and let's talk, Tsunade was happy for the first time after several days. If you want to know the reason well, let's just say that she was looking a very nice scene of slave sex in front of her and the subject was poor Pinky who was bad girl and was punished by her master Sasuke-sama. Sasuke-kun. I think she had enough, poor girl. Look at her ass, it's bleeding. She should not be able to sit on it for several days, oh, Hokage-sama. But you know, I think she should sit on it right now and she must do it after she lick your shoes clean. Now do it bitch. Sakura with a collar around her neck and weights on her tits started to walk on her hands and knees toward her other master and started licking her shoes without any argument. After all she was bad girl and she deserved punishment. Gurin was looking out of the window. She was in a room she rented for now. Life was not easy for her. No love, no relationship, no friendship, no plan for future, nothing. A totally empty life that was just centered around Orochimaru. And now, he was gone. She was empty. She had no plans and she didn't know what should she do. At first she was happy when she found those three fools. After all she had someone to order them doing things. But even at that time she was not happy. Who said that she wanted to order others? And again, they were gone thanks to that clay freak. What now? What should she do? She couldn't help but was thinking about rumors she heard about this mysterious man who traveled around by the name of Namikaze. She well knew who was Namikaze Minato. But as much as she knew there was no one left of his clan. So who was this new one? Could he be his son? Who knows? Maybe Minato had some secret relationship with some cheek. And what was these rumors telling that this man was whom killed Orochimaru? If that was correct then this man was powerful as hell. Maybe she could find him and then she could start from zero. 
and this time she would not do same mistakes she had done with Orochimaru. Yes she should find this guy. And by that she left the room and searched the town for any possible information. Shizune was sitting in her room with knees in her chest holding her head with both hands. She was trying to ignore those moaning and shouts from her sensei's room, not to mention those dirty words that was spoken aloud. This was not her sensei, she was not like this, when things changes this much. She was not sure, but one things was certain. She could not take it anymore. To make things worse, it seemed that council was planning to force her marry that bastard Sasuke. She could not think about what would happen to her after that. Who wants to be a slave that is punished every night with that brutal force? At least she was sane and she didn't want that. Naruto was standing on the monument looking to the sunrise on the sea. He was thinking about the future of the village and future of his clan. He was shocked last day when both Hana and Kurenai informed him about their feelings and told him that they want to marry him. Well, the aging boost that Kayubi gave him helped in this matter but he never looked at those two in this light. To be honest he always liked to tease Kurenai and Anko but, Hana was completely unexpected. His encounter with her was one or two times before his long travel with Erosanen but it seems that his flirt with Anko had some effect on the young Inazuka. His mind jumped to those who had been waiting for him for so long, Kin, Ino, Hanada, even young and cheerful Hanabi. He was not sure how should he approach them. They were so much deferent and he had lots of jobs to be done. He hoped that his mother and now two mates, Kayubi and Shian, could help him on this matter. Putting these thought away he thought about Yugito, Koyuki, Oku, Yugo, and other females that somehow in the past he helped them. He didn't think that they would be more than a laze. Sure, he helped them so much but again, they immediately repaid him by being on his side and he could not ask for more. Sighing deep he started going down and towards the tower. He should find a way to start gaining mission requests but how? Development of this new village was kept hidden until now. No other nation knew that such a village developed. To be honest, he was not satisfied with village's security. Not to mention that he had not so many shinobi in the village for now. But even if they arrive and he do the same system like Konoha, the security will suck. He should find a way to make it farther powerful. He had so many things to work on. Developing the new laws for the village was done thanks to his cage bunchens and these were the paperworks Kurenai mentioned last day. He grind remembering her look last day mentioning the genius way of handling the paperwork. With this refreshing memory he jumped down the mountain, ready to do his job as Onikage. One week passed and all the clan heads with many members entered the village. Naruto was thankful for Shien. She had done an amazing job developing new compounds for each clan when he was left the place. The only remaining people in hideout were Kin, Jiraiya, and some more and they would enter today. He wanted to start the council today. Q Chan. He called, Geez stop calling me that, okay Naruto-sama, can't it be just Naruto? No, not in this office when you are doing the job, Sai. Okay. I want to start the council when Jiraiya and others entered the village. And how will participate? Clan heads and their hairs, Shien, Jiraiya, Anko and other elites, Gara and siblings, Kin, you and me, I'll inform you when they were ready, thanks. Jiraiya couldn't help but was jumping around like a little kid. The village was nice and well developed. He had several concerns due to security but putting them aside he was glad. Suddenly a swirl of fire stopped his musing and he saw Kayubi. The most unexpected reaction was Yugito's bowing to Kayubi. Hello catty, tell that nice cat girl inside her that she will be out on her own fit soon, and tell her that she need to find a mate for this. Matter. Personally, I think Naruto-sama will be the best but, she is free to choose any other one. Hi. Well, that been said Naruto-sama is waiting for you to start the council meeting. And you should participate Kin. You can find the tower and the building as exact copy of the tower in Konoha. So you should find the council room easily. I should go and inform others. See you. And she went the same way she came. 
Jiraiya was serious and started moving toward the tower followed by Silent Yugito and Ken each with their own thoughts. Shizune couldn't hold it anymore. She was near losing her mind. And that was her reason for walking aimlessly in the streets. After some hours of walking she found herself standing in front of the ramen stand that Naruto kept speaking about all days. Entering the stand she looked around. There was a nice girl coming toward her which took her order and left. She didn't know her. Wasn't this stand belong to Ayame and her father? Anyo whereas Tuchi and Ayame. Ayame-chan is in back cooking ramen. Tuchi is retired and went to a border village to rest the remaining days of his life. I see. Hearing the sound Ayame came out. Looking to their customer and trying to remember her name. Hi. You are Hokage's assistant aren't you? Hi. Name Shizun. Welcome Shizun-chan. How can I help you? I don't know. I gave my order. I wasn't speaking about food. Life was stupid bitch. Itachi was sure about this. He had seen so many things in his life. People born and die every day. Take a look at hospital for example. In the same time you can see a patient die and a new baby come to life. Sometimes he had to kill people. Of course he didn't like it. But no one knew this. Most people thought that he was a killing machine. Sometime in past he believed it himself but, things change. Who knew that a shy Inazuka girl could change a killing machine to a passionate lover? He missed Rin for sure but he could not change things. Still he had hope. No one found her body and that means that he can have hope. Why not? And right when he was losing his passion this blonde boy came in view. Naruto. Yeah. He was all the things that Itachi hoped to have in life. He was tired of running away from those hunters and bounty collectors. It seemed that Kisame had same problem. Think about it. How can a person be without any feelings? Those fools that see them as heartless killing machines could never understand their condition. To put it simple there was an equation. If you don't want to kill equals with you'll be killed yourself. Nothing more. And for Kami's sake. Can you see any parameter about being heartless in this equation? Hey Itachi it seems that you are lost in the road of life. Yeah. You know. I was thinking about my life as shinobi and a missing nin again. You remember I told you that I want to retire? Well, I think it'll be soon. I'm glad to hear that because as I said before I want to be on your side when the time comes. After all, who wants to work side by side with a freak like that Toby? HN, if you ever know the reality behind that orange mask my friend, Karen was tired of this freak. She couldn't stand any more. The stupid man was speaking non-stop, and if you think about his lazy ass, oh Kami. She was thinking about her encounter with Gurren. Why did she ran away? After all she was her friend for so long and Orochimaru was gone. So why did she afraid of her? Could it be something about the freak? Nah. She was sure that Gurren never knew this water freak. So what? Suddenly a sound made her freeze in her track. Hello. If it isn't Karen. The only bitch with something more than what Snake gave her, looking around she saw her nightmare. A girl with red hair, and that stupid bandana on her head leaved no room to be wrong about her being. If it isn't to you, yeah, who else did you think will know you bitch? How fucking are you free? And what is this stupid fucking ass doing beside you? I thought that you hate him, yeah, you know. I still hate him but I needed a teammate to work with and you know. After your lovely master's death there was no good person left. Seriously. I thought that you were dead in the attack to Konoha, ha. Huh? Like that fucking nasty people can ever kill me, is that so? Then I assume that all sound five are kicking ass. Nah. They were enough stupid to stay and fight with army of Anbu. But I was not that much fucking arrogant. I know my limits. Yeah, good to hear that, to hear what? The death of them or my limits. It's good to know that you are smart enough to encounter reality. By the way do you still have the course mark? Yeah. I don't know why this stupid thing remained after that bastard's death. Hey I thought that you love it. What? Fuck you and your brain. Did you ever experienced it? What the fuck do you think it is? A C-O-U-R-S-S-E-A-L and do you honestly think that such a fucking course thing can be good in any aspect? 
Do your fucking mind accept slavery? I didn't know that it make you slave. If you wish. I like being master and I promise to be a god one, the stupid sword man said entering the conversation. What a wrong move. He never understood what hit him. The only thing he remembered was a pain in his family jewels indicating that he would never have children. Now that we are alone, do you want to come with us? And where the fuck are you going? I'm not sure. There is no certain destination for us. For now, I'm looking around gathering information about that stupid blonde that killed Orochimaru. By the way I think you should find him. I heard that he can remove that mark. Nani? Well, you see, I was around Orochimaru when he shouted about why the hell Anko's mark vanished and ordered Kabuto to go and investigate. Some days later the gay informed his love that there is a boy named Naruto that seems to found a way to remove the course mark. And this Naruto, is the same guy who, killed Orochimaru. Now be a good girl and tell me what happened in the battle between them and I'll tell you whatever information I have about him. Shizune was laying on her bed thinking about things that happened last day. She couldn't understand what was going on. The only thing that she knew was that Tsunade was different from past. She was not fool and was trained as a professional Kanoichi so, she could smell danger from far away. That Uchiha brat was the main core of every possible problem in future but, why her sensei couldn't see it. The village's only hope for survival in Shinobi world was Naruto and her sensei exiled him for her pathetic fears. Should she follow Ayame's guidance? What would happen if she do so? What would happen to her sensei? She knew that she was her sensei's only hope for survival but, with that brat around her poisoning her mind each minute what was hope? Sighing heavily she decided to wait for future days and see what will happen. Naruto was standing in his office looking at the village from the window. There were some of his friends outside yet. He should wait until they arrived to start the council. He had time. Maybe his last days of freedom before his fate as Onikage would restrict him in this office. He was thinking about the village's security system. He knew all about Konoha's system but didn't like it. After all, Itachi was able to penetrate it several times. Another problem was most needed academy system. He didn't like Konoha's academy. So much bullshit about history. What was the use of knowing history when you are face to face with someone like Orochimaru? No, he needed to train students perfectly to shape them as really powerful shinobi. Another thing that needed to be planned was ranking system. How should his shinobi grow in ranks? He didn't like the idea to send young ones to kill and be killed in one of those foolish chunin exams. He needed to plan about it with council when they started. Thinking about using his free time and how he can use it, he created several bunchins and ordered them to start reading his father's scrolls from clan's library. Kayubi was in front of the temple. She had great plans but didn't know how to execute them. But she knew that the only one who could help her was Shein. Opening the door she started walking in. Minutes later, after asking some people for finding her friend, she knocked the door. After hearing the permission she opened the door and entered the room. Imagine her shock when she found Shein laying on a big bed with nothing on her more than a transparent nightdress. The light from the window behind the girl making her golden hair shimmer majestically. Her body frame well defined by shadow on the dress. Wow, is that the only thing the great Kayubi can say? Am I that much amazing? More than you could imagine. Thanks. Now how should I welcome you in my temple? Said Shein teasingly. I came here to ask you for some help on my plans. Wheel, I think it can wait, answered Kayubi licking her lips with hidden message sending toward the blonde goddess. Why not? We have all the day. Now how should we start? Said Shein, motioning toward Kayubi asking her to come to bed by her index finger where was that damn demon woman? He was looking for her all the day. He needed to speak about serious matters with her. Jiraiya was pervert but not fool. He knew when he should be serious. And now was one of those days. He knew something was not right about himself and how he was behaving around Kashina and he needed to speak with another woman. And who was better than one with millennia expert? He was looking everywhere. Cage tower, new developed training grounds, restaurants, bars, everywhere. 
but that damn demon woman was nowhere to be found. Suddenly he found someone entering the village. Yeah, it was another party from the hideout. There was still more there and Kakashi, Enko, Hanada, Hanabi, Ino and some other elites were among them. He knew that they would come as last party. In the same time he was waiting for San siblings one of these days. Sighing, he went to Naruto. He was the last person that he wanted to speak with about his personal problem but, he had no other option. Some minutes later he entered the office from the window. Oi, Erosanin, seriously, did you ever enter any office from the door? No, why? Figures. Hey, anyway, how can I help you? Well, come on, you know that you can tell anything to me, anything? Hi, and you won't be angry? Nah, promise. Hi, ooh okay. You see, last night I was drinking in your mom's inn. Speaking with her about young time. Well, something is funny with me. I never was anxious around any woman. Even when I was young and was in Tsunade's team, never. But, last night, you were anxious around mom. Yeah, why? Are you afraid of her? Oh come on. Great Toad Sage afraid of an old Kanoichi, first. You don't know what your mom can do when she is serious and on business. Second, I was not afraid. I was feeling funny, funny. Yeah, you see, I was feeling like I was a young boy, and to be honest I was stuttering when I was looking to her eyes, wow, what? Hey, I think you, the super pervert, great Jiraiya, the toad sage, finally has matured. What does that mean brat? You'll find Tosin. Nani? Kashina was sitting behind her bar in the inn, waiting for her son and her new play doll, naming, Jiraiya. Yeah, she well knew what was happening. Last night she was speaking with her old love when she fell asleep and in her dream she saw him, in all his glory. He was smiling at her. And that smile was the only thing she needed to see to be assured that her new feeling toward the old pervert. After all why should not Minato approve his sensei? He was a great man. A powerful shinobi, pervert? Ya yeah, so much pervert. But old age do things to any person. Even herself was a goddess pervert herself, she would. Not accept it to anyone. Not in hell, but, she was. Smiling to her musing. She saw her doll entering the inn. Not sure about his behavior. She could see that in his every move. Thinking fast. She knew that she needed to do the first move. After all, who want to play with Cage's mom? With that decided she walked toward him. Catching his hand, without saying any word, forced her way toward her bedroom. Soon, all the village would hear whimpering and begging sounds of a man who saw his lifetime dreams come true. It was one of those damn rainy nights. That was the first thought of Eno. She was jumping from tree to tree leading the way to the new hidden home. They were last party and most of them were elites. She had nothing to worry so. As any human being, she let her mind wander. She thought about young age, about her academy time, about the time that world was built around that ice king of Emo, Uchiha Sasuke. To be honest, she never asked herself why she was interested toward him. After all, in that age, the name of Uchiha was like a golden mine. Every girl in the class was fighting to be his center of attention, but when she thought back, she remembered every bit of detail about Naruto. He was mysterious in his own manner. Those dark glasses he had for so long time, actually none of the academy students saw his eyes. And besides that, he was not so smart in exams but not so stupid too. Everyone thought that he was an average ninja, everyone except Hanada. To be honest, Ino didn't know what caused this kind of attention from Hanada. Maybe it was by Akugan. Or maybe she was more mature than the rest of the class and saw the real man between bunch of kids. She was not sure about her own future with Naruto. Sure she was one of the first candidates to marry him but she was damn sure she was not alone. If they were in Konoha, then that would not be a problem. As the last Namikaze, Naruto had to have more than one wife and that would increase the chance. But now? Naruto himself was the law and if he didn't want, no one could force him to do such thing. Ino knew him well. Naruto was something else. Yeah. Most of the men would use this opportunity to seduce women but, Naruto. 
Ya, he would sacrifice himself to get peace between his lovers, he would never choose and never marry. No matter what, I won't let that happen, he sacrificed more than enough, now is our time. Ya, if I can't be his wife, let it be. I prefer to see him happy with Hanada or anyone else, and with that thought she jumped in the darkness of the forest. She was the last one in the formation. The rain was washing her face reminding her the first night with her own sensei. She could remember every detail. How could she forget that damn night? The night that her life was changed forever. The night that her personality was changed and by that she lost almost everything for so long. If it wasn't by Naruto's actions, she would lost her entire life. How could she repay that? She was well aware of her own personality. The sadistic part of herself that everyone was afraid of. The mask that she used to save herself from population. Those that saw her not for herself but for her damn sensei. But, there was one stupid boy that refused to be afraid. Naruto was deferent. She could remember her first meeting with him. He was in academy and was looking at Ino. When he found that he was being watched by another older woman, he smiled that damn sweet smile and scratched back of his head. The first thing that Anko could remember for that moment was, how sweet. But that damn history of her and her damn creepy sensei being around forced her to make him scared. And what was the result? He tried to sacrifice himself saving other children especially Eno. Her eyes swiped on Eno's ass, jumping from tree to tree. Anko was not lesbian. She had dreams about one special person but she would never accept it in other people's face. No, she was not lesbian, but if not why she thought about her best friend every now and then. Was she really lesbian? If yes then why she dreamed about some guys times to times? Hell, she even had dreams about copycat himself. Nah, I'm not lesbian and I'm not straight. Then what am I? Some lost person with lost personality? Some empty shell of humanity? When was the last time I thought about being in love? Yeah, it was when I saw Naruto back from his trip, when I thought that it was Yandaimi. Hey, even now I feel the same. Then why I can't take of my mind from Ino? Certainly I'm not in love with her but. What if Naruto chose her for marriage? Can I accept another lost? Can I accept to let him go? Can I be around him and not make problems? Come on Anko think about it, there should be a way. If we were in Konoha, yeah, there was CRA but here, in our new home, will Naruto agree to make the same rules? But Ino's voice calling her to be faster brought her to real world and with that she jumped out of the sight. She was glad that the rain masked her tears. Her long-time love lost her life trying to be on time for others. He sacrificed his life for others as always. Sometimes she could not stand it. He was so like Naruto. Looking around she saw Kakashi near herself. His attention was elsewhere. Thanks God that he didn't read his creepy porno book from when they left Konoha. Maybe he wanted to start a new life with new habits and new personality. Oh Kami, how much she missed her love. She could remember the first day after Chunin exam when he came to her and asked her if she wants to learn how to use sword. They had no serious relationship then, but training with him done magic to her. Day after day the training sessions got longer and they spent more time with each other. Day after day they spoke more about themselves with each other. Day after day they looked toward the next day more than ever. And now, he was gone. His last words was ringing in her ears. Try to be happy my love. You deserve better than a sick man. He can make you happy more than I could. Promise me. Be happy with him and let go of me. How could she let go? Hayate was her hero in life. Yet, there was Naruto. Even if he had done nothing serious for her yet, he had done more than enough for everyone else to show them that he was ready to sacrifice himself whenever needed. She was hoping that he accept her. And with that hope she tried to focus on something else. Kakashi and his new habit of playing with Kanai for being exact. He was walking in the empty streets. He loved rainy nights because they were darker than any other night. His mind was wandering around thinking about his childhood. His not so long happy and shiny days of life. His mom, his dad, his family. 
all that glory went down to hell by one man's hands and he promised to himself that he would get the revenge. He trained hard, harder than anyone could do. But yet, he was a loser, as his brother told him more than one time. His try to getting stronger was failure. Now he had a town under his nails but, a town that was an empty shell. Soon other villages would know about their problem. And then, there would be war. And they would lost because they had lost their most important shinobis and clans. Why that damn old, crazy, motherfucker can't think about this. Hell, the only thing she is thinking these days is how she can ride me and get lost in her own desires. Come to think of it, she can't even focus on simple matters anymore. This can't go any longer. She can't boss me, the last Uchiha, the one that should be in her place as Hokage. And yet, she uses me as her sex machine, how dare she? Think man, there should be a way around this. That damn mark on my neck won't let me do anything that she won't agree with. What if I can make her agree with her own doom? Oh yeah. Now the only thing I need is to make her drunk and make her agree to remove that damn mark. No, it won't work. Sure I can make her drunk as much as she can't remember her own name but, still removing the mark needs her to be on full alert and that can't be happen. Now, what can I do? Let's see. The mark won't let me do things without her approval, and she will approve so many things without thinking when she is drunk. Yeah, I can use it. I can make her ashamed of herself and crash her mind. Then I can play games and force her to harm herself. Yup. This way she will lose her life by her own hand and by that the mark will be gone and I will be free. And then. Wait Konoha. Your new Hokage is on his way ha 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 ha. That was the last bit of patience she used today. She knew it. One more stupid act and she would lost her temper. That stupid brat of Uchiha. How could he let himself touch her bot like that? For Kami's sake he could have any girl in the village, why her? And what was her sensei's reaction? Just laughing her ass telling her that she will make a good slave. Good slave ha? Huh? After all she had done for her sensei, this was the appreciation. That emo. King. That stupid, power hungry brat. How could her sensei do this? Didn't she see what was going on? Couldn't she understand what was Sasuke's plans? What would happen when Tsunade was out of chain of command? She was damn sure that those remained bastards in council will make Uchiha the Hokage. And then? That would be the end for Konoha. Could she let this happen? Could she change everything for everyone? The problem was clear and the salvation was easy. If she just killed the brat, then everything would be more safe. But what would happen to herself? She sacrificed all her life for her sensei and what was the result? Being a slave. No, she won't do it anymore. If Tsunade want to deny everything that she had done for her, fine. That was the end of the road for both of them. She would die by Sasuke's hand? Not her problem. Konoha would fall? No big deal. They had this in road when they lost Naruto. Future could be full of surprises. With Naruto developing a new shinobi village. The balance between countries would be out of old fashion and sure everyone would try to use this for their advantage. And with current situation, Konoha would be the last one in the list. Fine, it's not her problem. Not at all. She had done more than enough for her uncle and his long-ended love. Now was the time that she should start a new life for herself. These were the thoughts of Shizune when she found herself in the stand of old ramen shop. Going in. She found a Yame alone. Perfect. Just what I needed. Seems that I made a true decision. Naruto was standing at the window looking to his village. Now he knew why Sandame had done this many times each day. Looking at the village, he could sense people's responsibility on his shoulders, their safety, their needs, their happiness, their love and their importance in his own life. Now he could understand the meaning of fire within persons that his old man spoke about many times. This fire was burning to keep the cage's desire to protect everyone of citizen happy. But he could not be relaxed. There were so many issues that needed his attention. The village wasn't complete yet. He could not reveal it at the world. Not until he complete security and ranking system. His musing was cut by door being knocked. 
It's open, looking back at the door he saw Anko at door frame. Hello dear, is there a problem? Hello Foxy. Actually there is someone that I need to speak with you about. Go on, well, I think you remember her as Cat Anbu from your young days. Ah, uh, yeah, she was really nice to me. Did something happen for her? Too many things happened for her, some very sad things, some complex. Can I do anything for her? Is she still in Konoha? No she is not there, she came with us, you see, she was Hayate's fiance. Oh, yeah, as you see, she lost her loved one but, Anko, what is the matter? Why you won't say the thing that is bothering you? I'm not sure how should I approach, hmm, straight. Well, she and Hayate had some personal speech before his death. Seems that they both agreed that after his death she must be happy, and Hayate told her that the only person that can make her happy is Kakashi. Oh God, no, hmm, Yamato, come on, are you this much fool? I don't know many from Konoha. You know him well, better than anyone, Jiraiya? Hell no. I prefer to die before accepting it, um. Is there any problem between Jiraiya and you? Problem? Problem? Hell yeah. What will you do if someone sleep with your mother for one night and next morning say that it was not the thing he thought would be? Nani? U-H-U-M. Never mind. Is this guy Jiraiya? Oh no. Did you think that Hayate will approve it? God, then who is this lucky guy? You, Baka, it's you, me. Yeah, but, but, don't tell me that you don't find her attractive. No, it's not it. She is as attractive as you and Tenchi. Then what is the problem? Too many things, I'm not sure if I should have more in-house. You, Hannah, Shein, Q, Kin, Eno, Hanada, Kurenai, it's too much. I'm not sure if I can handle this many women at the same time. Now, adding you go? I'm not sure if I can make her or any other girls happy. Didn't you know that you need to have many wives? I thought that it won't be more than five inches. Hey, well, seems that you have no experience in clan material so much. What do you mean? When the person is the last one in his clan, he need to have more than ten wives, or else, by the law of life, the clan won't expand with desired speed. And when you think that you live in shinobi environment that many people die in young age, the chances for your clan to be powerful enough to defend itself is less than normal law. You mean that I need to have more than these? Exactly, but how should I keep balance Anko Chan? It can be a dangerous approach. The only thing that you need to pay attention is to choose a powerful and good alpha. Someone like Kayubi. You should choose a person that can handle things between girls with power and absolute command. She don't want to be alpha. She told it to Kasan that. She want to have normal and relaxing life. Then choose the next powerful one. There are three options Anko, Yu, Ker Chan, and Hannah Chan. Personally I don't think that Hannah can handle things. But you and Ker Chan are best options. Now, the problem is who should I choose? Hmm. I think you should add some more names to your list, like Yugo, Yugito, and that acid blonde EX Mizukage, don't tell me. Hee <laughs> hee, I just told their secret love. Now, don't reject them fast. Give time to things to solve themselves. You have so many things that need your attention now. Just solve your issues in village and let me handle things in your personal harem for now. But we need a harem council. What do you mean? A meeting after all your problems were solved in village. To decide things between ourselves, like. Choosing Alpha is one of them. I see, okay Foxy, I'll let you go know that you approved her. Now, go back to damn cage job, said Anko. Winking and leaving Naruto to his thoughts. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my other social media accounts. Anime God here, and I'm signing off.